IITs generally have a much better incubation centers than IIMs. IIMs would have startups. I would say any B school would have startups. Uh, something of uh, something non technical but when it comes to iits because the major cro- crowd there is from btech or mtech they would have tech based startups there and i didn't know that ma- these questions would be asked during the i was preparing on macro economics i was preparing on those current affairs but i happened to get these kind of questions but now. so the average that is talked about in the placement reports right which falls somewhere around 22 lpf this would include uh joining bonus or say any of uh, variable yeah. bonuses as well yeah. how are you doing hi kripal i'm good how are you <laughs> one correction again it's kripal not kripal but yeah i was okay. trying to pull along <laughs> i'll try to keep that in mind yes kripal <laughs> so, so you're currently placed at uh, which company are you currently working with so i'm currently working as senior product analyst at media.net it's an ad tech firm mhm so f- right now i'm based out in kochi kerala in kochi kerala so what do ad tech firms basically do advertising technology right yeah exactly so what we build products for to support advertisement advertisements online ads so it's more like the kind of ads that you see when you open any website right so most of them are there is lot of complexity behind that most of them would have some kind of a real time bidding going on there for that ad slot for that user so yeah. that is so the products that support it's more like a stock exchange so the products that support this real time bidding or uh, rendering the ads is what we build so one sec one sec do you guys act as facilitators of purchase of ads that's what you're trying to imply yeah that is so, one part of the business and there are few parts where uh, we have directly enrolled few publishers so we have fixed placements on their site so this is mostly in the us and europe european union side so yeah so so basically you guys also take part in the dynamic pricing aspect where for example if you're trying to book a flight ticket there are ai and ml models which basically you know track the prices is that something huh. you guys do as so well so here it's more like a bidding it's more like bidding between advertisers so we bridge between the supply side and the demand side so supply side is the publisher side or the website that you see and the demand side is the advertiser side be it any company who wants to advertise for this particular user they start bidding on it and whoever wins the bid gets to render that ad so supporting this whole ecosystem is what we build so basically you provide technological solutions to the exchange of that thing exactly that, right so how do you do it like what are the kind of platforms that you work on to get that going so uh, i mean it's all internally built and uh, what uh, so i mean this is a very fragmented industry it's not like outright the, what i told you is just one use case there are other use cases where we have fixed placement as well and we are also coming up with video ads wherein it's more of like a contextual advertising so the ads that are rendered are in context with the blog or the site that is being read by the user and then there are there is some kind of filtering between the users like uh, filtering out high intent users so that we get more more money from them uh, high intent them. users yeah so we add more uh, say more pages so there would be a keyword click which would have let's say you are reading for example you are reading something about ipl hmm an article about ipl so there would be a block where there would be five to six keywords that would be closely related to cricket or ipl or any player and you click on that you would be taken to a serp page serp page stands for search in search engine uh, search engine result page so wherein you would be give, you would be shown few articles or few titles or few ads once you click on it you go to the advertiser so what we are doing here is we are only taking high intent user to advertiser by just adding a single page in between a high intent yeah. user is categorized by the kind of search that he does on google or no, is there see, any other criteria uh, if if the user was of a low intent he wouldn't go past the search page he wouldn't go to mm. the advertiser page so mm. you are filtering out those low intent users and you are only taking high intent user to advertisers f- for which we can charge extra That's so basically you are controlling the, the entire journey of advertisements onboarding exactly. and yeah. allowing the this thing reducing the time between how much it takes to place an order as well exactly yeah. the landing so that, that is that is also a matter so i mean again can can you be a little more nuanced and intricate with the technological aspect of it so you mentioned about the ad about the website how are mm-hmm. you as a team member as an ad tech team member facilitating that So my role right now, I, I as I said, I work as senior product analyst. So I handle the business metrics. 
Yeah. So when uh, let's say there is a drop in any particular metrics like uh, revenue per user or something. So I dig into it. I dig into the data to figure out what exactly is the issue. Where is this happening? Which particular publisher this is happening? Or is it from an advertiser side? And then that goes to the account manager who would be handling that publisher. And this is the whole flow. Mm -hmm. And mostly root cause analysis that's being done. And right now I'm also part of few implementations as well. For example, uh, the privacy implementation on the GDP, uh, the European Union side. It's called GDPR. So. GDPR, the data regulation and all exactly. of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as an ad tech firm, we have to be compliant to it. So what we are doing right now is because you're primarily operating in EU and US and UK, right? You mentioned right. this. Yes. So uh, US has something called MSPA and uh, EU has something called GDPR. So uh, so these kind of lay down a framework or a structure that needs to be followed by every participant in the ad compilation the regulation. Online digital ad. Yeah. So, Dhishan, what do you see as the future of marketing, of online marketing specifically, given the fact that you're a part of MediaNet and you're getting to be a product analyst as well? So, where do you see uh, advertisements will change? Because pop-up ads, landing pages, these have been very much, uh, what do you call, in the market for the last two decades. Yes. Do you see any change in that going ahead? So, uh, so there are a lot of, uh, I think the change would be more on the regulation side because a lot of regulations are coming up, which are... I mean, just let's say 10% implemented and 90% more to be implemented. This is going to make it tougher for people to show ads right. to because yeah, yeah, it's gonna make it tougher because there are there is gonna be restriction on the cookies that would be placed on the user's mm -hmm. browser. And again, the because there are giants like Google also involved in this, so there AdSense. there would be some way around. They would figure out some way around, but it's gonna make it tougher because it's going to make targeting a particular user tougher. Mm -hmm. So. So let's say Kripal, you are going, you are operating yourself, you're surfing through the web. So mm -hmm. right now, uh, advertisers can know your interest. They know your past history. They know what, what is the kind of thing that, I mean, they know almost where all you're going and they know all of it with which they, you might be experiencing this, right? You might yeah. be, you might search a particular thing and then, then it comes say, up on the ads. All the you open some website, you see the ads related to that. So this is going to be tougher. This is going to be made tougher by the regulations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is one thing. And uh, and again, I think where we as uh, media.net has a strength is when it comes to contextual advertising. Right now, when it comes to contextual advertising, we are not taking any user related data. We are depending more on the context of the on the of the site or the or the blog that is being read. So that itself is more like uh, targeting, but without any personal information because the fact that the user is reading this, going through this website itself says something about their interest. Their interest, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's also a signifier of them being high intent customers, like you mentioned earlier. Exactly. Yes, yes. And so also in India, we have the data protection bill, which was due for a very long period of time. Then in 2023, it was finally ratified. So mm -hmm. do you guys function in India as well? Or uh, are you guys limited to Western? We do, but the revenue on the traffic side is too less for that. So major focus is on US as well as EU. Achha, is there any reason why India is not doing too well when it comes to spending on ads and stuff? I think uh, the amount spent by advertisers is quite less when we compare with the other nations. So, so this is like we make fragment out of this is a high volume game, right? So yeah, yeah. this is uh, because if you see per advertisement, what is made is few cents there. But once the volume gets added up, it adds to good amount of revenue. And when it comes to India, Per ad, what you get is like peanuts. So I don't think there is much interest from their side because of this factor. Per ad, what you get is peanuts, because but the number of ads is less as well. That's what you're trying to imply. No, I'm saying the amount paid by the advertisers, the willingness of advertisers to pay for an advertisement is quite less compared to that in the US. Uh, but at the same time, I think the whole scenario is changing because of uh, internet penetration that is taking part uh, in yeah. India. So. <laughs> Uh, the, uh, the the pace at which it's growing yeah, so yeah, yeah. it should it should improve yeah. and about the volume even in volume india is a little bit sluggish yeah, as the internet penetration goes up the volume is going to go up makes sense makes sense that was a very elaborate discussion whatever your current role is and the kind of marketing future that india and the world at large holds so coming to your aspiration were you sure that you would want to be uh, this thing a uh, product analyst a senior product analyst at media.net I uh, was more inclined towards product management. So this is like a stepping stone into PM, PM side. 
but mm-hmm. at the same time i was also interested in mostly on the marketing side be it uh, brand management or category management so that was the kind of mindset i had during my mba so during my final year of mba so i would look out for those companies that offer me these kind of roles it is not often that i get to hear a student who is interested in marketing getting to pursue his mba from iit delhi It's yeah. not often that I get. I mean, I, th- I think through this podcast, you will be getting to know more about that more because about there IIT. is this common perception about my MBAs from IIT. Wow! So, wow! Yeah. wow. So uh, until you made it to IIT, D, before that, you happened to be an engineer, if I'm not wrong. Yes. So I had a typical journey before before MBA. So I think gem. many can relate to it. Yes, gem. <laughs> And uh, did my engineering in mechanical. So I am a 2018 graduate of. Uh, mechanical engineering post which i took up a job in an it company as an entry level software engineer so that is full as a full stack developer that is also when i started preparing for cat to get into management acha so, so that yeah. so when you were trying to work as a software developer how were you so sure how did you arrive at that clarity that yes marketing is something that i need to enter into and mba is the only thing that can get me there yeah so so working as a software developer i knew this is not my cup of tea as in uh, it's not about not being able to learn had i put effort into it probably i would have probably uh, gone ahead in that field but it's the interest right so i always wanted to be on the business side of things so here when i was working i would see the business requirement coming coming down to me as a technical requirement mm-hmm. so that is something that i thought this is not what i want to do in life like going ahead 5 to 6 years down the line i still don't want to be coding sitting in front of laptop and coding so i wanted to be part of those dis- uh, business discussion or those requirements that are sorted so interestingly i was working in uh, in a company which was developing products for uh, aviation so oh. we are developing products for airlines so crew management ticket booking we are developing products for that so there i could see the kind of thing business teams were doing interacting with big airlines like jetstar british airways and cracking those deals that was something that sitting as a developer there that is something that i was more interested in than sitting and uh, probably building a page or something and how were you so sure that mba is the only way to get there the marketing side of things the business side of things yeah so coming from this tech, typical engineering background right either you have an option of uh, entering any particular form at a entry level sales role to further move ahead in the marketing uh, area but mba is like that i mean i think you would be able to relate mba is that shortcut let's say i mean in terms of time frame not in terms of that effort push, that push yeah so in the two years you are you would be ahead you would be say where you would have been 6 to 7 years down the line after post year uh-huh. after doing an mba in like two years it allows you to move up the ladder without having the burnt of you know working for 5 to 6 years makes exactly. sense exactly yes sense so moving ahead with your cat journey you told this you have this on your linkedin bio as well that third time is the this thing is the way to glory third time is when you cracked it can you run me through your cat journey yeah so uh, as i mentioned i graduated in 2018 and took up this job as a, a developer yeah. and that is that was also cat 2018 was also my first attempt so just few months before cat when the registrations were open i heard from my friends that there is this exam called cat i was not aware of this exam before that and then that is when i got an okay so this is what i want to do and this mba is going to help me and that cat is the way i have to get into this mba and i right away went and registered for it having no idea about the level of competition in this cat right so you would be knowing like 2.5 lakh people writing 2.5 to 3 lakh people writing and the level of competition like being be a gem yeah being a gem scoring even 8 98 to 99 doesn't guarantee an admission in top b schools so but i wasn't aware of any of this i just went ahead registered for cat took up few basic materials like like basic topics like what is simple interest what is compound interest prepared on the percentages prepared on that gave up cat i thought i was already ready to get into this top 10 to 15 people <laughs> and cat 2018 was the eye opener which kind of showed me the level of competition okay this is how it is this is the amount of effort people put in to get into mba and i knew that i had definitely not done that and i scored around uh, 84% in cat 2018 
but i knew somewhere i always knew that i was good at aptitude so mm-hmm. be it during my uh, engineering placements the kind of aptitude test that we attend i was i felt i was slightly i was kind of better than the rest of my friends so i thought this is not it this is i hadn't put that effort so now one i have to put that effort and probably try to achieve something better get into those top 15 to 20 colleges at least and that is when i started preparing seriously for cat 2019 and uh, i mean topic wise i prepared really really good and gave up few marks that weren't enough because i was also working i also had this job so i couldn't spare much time but i mean that is a story with most of the people i think they go that extra mile maybe i didn't go that extra mile there so i ended up scoring 96 in cat 2019 96 yeah but then you know there is always this feeling right after exam uh, we look back at the question paper and see if, damn i knew this question I could have done it better. I could have scored much more. I could have scored another ten to fifteen marks there. Yeah, yeah. So that was the kind of feeling I had. So I thought, okay, fine. CAT twenty twenty is going to be my last shot. Whatever I get in this, I'm gonna enter MBA, some college there. So that is when I started giving more marks because my foundation and concepts was already kind of strong in for my CAT twenty nineteen preparation. I started giving more marks and analyzing each mark to the detail. That is that would that would be. the fact that would be one thing that i would advise anyone if they are aiming for something higher giving mocks and analyzing them is the main thing so mm-hmm. trying out different strategies during the mock analyzing them and then seeing out whether the strategy worked whether you should use it in the actual exam or not that is that was a game changer for me and that took me to 99 percentile wow in cat 2023 to be precise no 99.73 was in cat 2023 with i which i just wrote after my mb i was just curious so then uh, cat 2020 i scored 99.01 acha i imagine after getting to do your mba you are scoring 99.73 but there's no use <laughs> i know that feel bro like after doing mba scoring 99.73 and getting call from i am bangalore oh now definitely uh, didn't have any plan of doing second mba and i know that that is Yeah. Acha, Dishan, when you gave your last attempt in 2020 and you got 99.01 percentile, were you working in that period as well? I uh, I was working till October of 2020, and just a month before CAT, I knew this is the th- this is the thing. This is this is my last attempt, and I'm going I'm going for MBA after this. So I wasn't okay. I didn't want to spend more time there. So I quit my job in 20 October 2020, just uh, one to one and a half months before <laughs> CAT, and I would say that was. that was i would say that was a very bad move that i did there because have not having plan b right that is the toughest part of giving cat because cat comes once in a year right mm. and when you don't have plan b you have so much pressure on that particular day when you're writing exam cuz right before cat 2020 all i could think was if this is not going to Fates. work out what am i going to do I'll yeah road, that yeah. was the pressure that was going on and i think that is one reason why uh, performance was not up to my peak there during the exam so uh the night before cat 2020 i didn't sleep i couldn't sleep i couldn't sleep for a minute i remember calling up around 3:30 am calling my mom up at 3:30 am saying that i'm not able to sleep i don't know what i'm going to do tomorrow because i had the morning slot where i had to report at 6:30 in the morning mm-hmm. and uh so that was i entered i entered the exam with red eye with the uh, sleepy eyes and the first uh, first section which was we yeah. yeah there you have to read all those long uh, <laughs> right? that is where i kind of lost it that was i mean that is that was the section that brought me down so i scored below 80 percentile so which is like the cut off by most of the sectional cut off of 80 is what is followed by most of our uh, top uh, b schools right so that was one reason why, why i couldn't get into probably something better acha uh, what about the rest of the examinations didn't you appear for zat test net yeah, yeah. i appeared for zat and snap uh had pretty good percentile in snap i had cracked uh, sabm pune as well i had got an admission letter offer letter from them but then i chose iit delhi over this thing and for the reasons i would be telling in this podcast yeah, yeah. so uh building upon that as well is there anything unique that you did with your preparation apart from analyzing mocks is there anything else that you would like to advise all the aspirants for okay uh so one thing is understanding the concept is the core of cat because if you don't understand the concept let's say simple interest you just learn simple okay this is 
the yeah. uh, pnr by 100 is simple interest you finish it there you are not going to make it because under the kind of question that will be asked see uh, cat is not one of those exams where you are asked straightforward questions so mm -hmm. not like they give you principal amount number of years uh, the uh, rate of interest and they ask you to calculate simple and that is not how it's going to work right exactly it's not like just put substitute for pnr and get simple uh -huh. interest you need to understand those questions for that going to the core of each concept is what is important and second thing is understanding strengths and weakness right so everyone for me even when it comes to quantitative aptitude arithmetic was my area of strength and i knew that uh, speed distance time percentages simple interest mi mixtures allegations these were my strengths areas of strengths and that is something i wanted to capitalize on mm -hmm. during the exam so and also understanding the weakness where you where I, for me algebra was that part where i knew that i wasn't good at so when it, during the exam when i see algebra question only if it's very easy to solve i would go ahead do, do it if it is something above that i would just mark it and then go to the next question finish all arithmetic problems mm -hmm. so playing on those areas of strengths and weakness is what you need to learn for that uh getting the basics right and analyzing your strengths that is the key to yes, bettering your exactly. preparation exactly makes sense makes sense after that so after scoring a very grand 99.01 percentile what were the colleges that you landed an interview call at uh cap call i had cap call i am i think uh, i'm not sure if i am rotak was part of cap that year but i remember 20. Having, yeah 2020 i don't think so so yeah, so I think I am Rotak had a separate process. Separate so, one, yeah. Yeah, that was one call I had. Then SIBM uh, Symbiosis, SIBM Pune, STM HRD, and uh, all the new IMs. Then IIT Delhi. Oh, only IIT Delhi, no other IIT. No, uh, because as I told you, my uh, the BRC sectional cutoff that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was the reason because I think almost all the old IMs and even IIT Bombay has this. 80 80 percentage as their sectional cutoff. Sectional cutoff. And I also add I am Shillong and I am uh, sorry IIT Karakpur. Achha, achha. So the interview experience at IIMs versus IITs is there a world's difference between both of them? For me, I remember IIT uh, my IIT interview. I remember being asked a lot of technical questions because mm -hmm. I was from a mechanical background and unfortunately. The panelist also was from a mechanical background, so that is where <laughs> I would say he asked me deep because that was something mechanical engineering related subject was something that I studied three to four three years back then when I was giving the interview and I didn't know that these questions would be asked during game. I was preparing on macroeconomics, I was preparing on those current affairs, but I happened to get these kind of questions. But somehow I feel I defended well and. I think that is the reason why I ended up getting that admission call over there. So what do you mean by defending? You mean that you didn't get into an argument that why are you asking me this question or you no, answered? No, no, no. I was able to, uh, I mean, so there are for every subject, there would be this score. I mean, if you have studied that, let's say for physics, if you have studied, you need to be understanding at least you need to be knowing like you are 10 years down the line, you should be able to answer a few basic questions on kinematics or let's say electro electromagnetic uh, kind of thing so, uh, so i think i think that is where the basic at least the core basic i was somewhat able to convey i was able to answer that there during the interview and most of the im interviews were thoroughly about business nothing apart from that it was thoroughly about uh, business and about myself so That's why right. do you want to do mba those are the kind of questions why do you want to do mba this is uh, your background so after after your mba where do you see yourself yeah. How do you think your background is going to help you during your MBA? So those knowing about yourself is what is needed there. Uh -huh. In IIT, knowing about your skills in your course is more important. That's yes. what you're trying to say. That depends. I mean, it again depends on the panelist. So you cannot generalize saying this is what is for IIM, this is what is for IITs. Because even, even I remember even for IIM Shillong, I was asked a lot more about my engineering uh, background. Lot A lot more questions on engineering. So, I mean, it also depends upon the panelist. If the panelist happens to be from your field, then you should be Doomsday. expecting a lot of questions from there. Makes but sense. all they try to see is even if they're asking us questions on engineering or any questions on uh, your field of study, they're not trying to see whether you're able to give the exact definition or something. All they're, all they're seeing is Concept. whether you understood what you did or whether you just did it for the sake of doing it. If there's enough conceptual clarity, that's what you're trying to say. 
exactly and also few uh, interviews also uh, kind of give this stress test there see how we are handling these things so they might ask you some very uh, difficult question and see they would be just observing you about how you are handling it you become too nervous there you start i mean kind of flumming flumming there so they might probably feel that okay he is not having that confidence yeah, yeah, so yeah. the way you present yourself is what is important so apart from sibm pune scm hrd and iit the were, were there any other colleges that you converted a call at yeah i had uh, converted iim ranchi and uh, iim udaipur iim udaipur so, so you so when you were trying to make a figurative assessment of which college is better among iim udaipur and iit delhi mm-hmm. what were the factors that went to into it so uh, i mean everyone would have different reasons right yeah. some would choose iim udaipur over iit delhi but the reason why i chose iit delhi over i am udaipur is when it comes to brand brand value or the tag that is going to be associated with me for the rest of my life when i pursue mba from these institutes i felt it to be kind of at the same level be it iit delhi yeah. or i am udaipur yeah. but fees was another factor the value for money if i am getting the same brand why would i want to pay more for double the amount yeah double the amount when it comes to i am udaipur or iit delhi so that yeah. was one thing and i think uh, the other factor would be i mean value for money is one thing and brand value brand tag when well, it's the same there's no point about making what you call spending more yeah and also iit uh, dms iit delhi was much older than these new iims right uh, IIM when was it founded dms iit i think it was in 94 or 95 i'm not really sure exactly that's Around like that. almost 28 years from today so yeah. 14 batches have passed out in date exactly and about i am udaipur that's a recent one like in 2005 or something after that i am udaipur yeah is much recent much newer than uh, i did but it's doing pretty well these days huh i am udaipur yeah. has come up really well <laughs> so once you entered i, I, mean, I think they have a very lovely campus as well i have seen their yeah, yeah, photos yeah. and it's really good yeah yeah even iit delhi's campus is great man yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so talk of your experience at iit the the moment you entered the gate the moment you went into the college Were you shocked that the campus is not up to the mark like the rest of the IIMs, or were you content and happy? See, uh, I had never seen any IITs before that, and my friends who had been to other IITs like IIT Bombay were kind of disappointed looking at IIT Delhi's campus because it's not as big as probably mm-hmm. say I, IIT Bombay. It's mm-hmm. not that big, and uh, it's around three twenty acres the campus, and but it is in the South Delhi. Like it's exactly. a good location, yeah. Exactly, exactly. But the campus-wise, I felt it to be, I mean, it's good enough to be there for two years. Yeah. And yeah. you get all the facilities, be it sports or any other, whatever you need in the campus, it's all present there. So the hostel happens to be covered for the MBA students, or is it boys only, girls only? No, no, no. It's boys only and girls only. But there's <laughs> this uh, new uh, hostels that were built, which are. two buildings attached and out of which it one was given for girls one was given for boys acha the common message this is where i am have a different policy they have covered hostels so yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a different ball game altogether apart from that so basically the campus etc like dms has a specific building to it yes so where? department of management studies is a separate building where all uh, management related courses like mba phd management courses happen there and is there anything else like like a bloomberg terminal or something you know like a lab or something where you can get to understand finance but are, are there any facilities of that kind available as well? uh, i am not i'm not really aware of that but yes there are good facilities but see what happened is my first year of mba was online so it was the covid batch right uh, so yeah. we were here we were i was sitting here at home and i was doing my first year second year is when i went there and fortunately iits follow this semester system Mm. we follow the iit calendar right mm-hmm. so there we get i mean we get to be in campus for hardly say 7 to 8 months mm. in one year in the second mm. year mm. yes so basically that yeah, all these facilities are available it's there all the facilities yeah 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 at the end of the day it's an iit after all. iit delhi that too of all exactly. the places you so, even get access to the iit central library right so wow. everything is available over there whatever you you also talked of you know having all the facilities what about the professors like i read this at a few places that all the professors who come here have done a lot of research work beforehand mm-hmm. with the subject that they teach how were yes. the professors like professors so talking about my department 
So DMS professors, as you said, have come up with this research background. So most of them would have done their PhD in uh, say IIM Ahmedabad or so courses related to this. So they are really good. Professors are very good and few professors, I would say, who stand out the kind of discussions that happen during the class, the kind of the openness in the class, right? It's it's not like it's not like teaching. It's not like coming here and teaching something. It's more like an open ended discussion there that happens where whole class participates. So, I mean, once you enter, you would figure out those professors who match up to your style of teaching or your style of learning. So, yeah. If you had to take even the worst of professors who taught at IIT D, hmm. are they up to a certain caliber which is satisfactory? Definitely, yes. So they have that. I mean, uh, they have had so much experience. So there would be at least thirty to thirty-five years of experience. So, oh. so they would be uh, teaching. I mean, few professors probably the kind of ones whose teaching style I didn't probably relate too much. But even then, they would have a they would have this uh, skill to get you engaged in the class. Captivate the audience. And even if you go there with the mindset that, shit, this professor, I don't want to sit here. But you end up getting engaged in the class. Oh, and it's a lot of, it's more friendly. So you don't have to be the, all that formal and stuff. It's just out there. Speak out your idea and see what the whole class has to say about it or what the professor has to tell about it. That wow. is. Nothing can be better than the fact that even if you hate a professor, you're getting to be a part of his class and being engaged exactly. with it. Yeah, Nothing yeah. can be better. And what about a typical lecture? How does it go? Like, uh, you know, they discuss case studies, etc. Or is there something else involved? Yeah, yeah, case studies. So finance ones would definitely have those uh, finance principles and those things that you have to learn. The, uh, the modeling, financial modeling that needs to be learned. But uh, when it comes to marketing, it's mostly case discussions mm -hmm. and mostly uh, the experience of the professor, like, I mean, all these professors would have worked with some brand, be it in terms of uh, helping some brand in research, or they would have been, they would have been an employee of their brand, they would have built the brand. So they would be telling out how, what were, how was their experience and what not, what needs to be kept in mind when you build a brand or mm -hmm. when you're doing sales, how, how should the sales process be designed? So mm -hmm. this is all coming from their experience. It's not like, it's not a PPT where they it's come up with a PPT. Driven. Yeah, yeah, it's not that and, and about the yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. So uh, rest of the cases, it's mostly Harvard cases that are discussed. Yeah. So you uh, would be given the case one or two days before the class, and as a student, you have to go through that case, form an opinion about what has happened, and then it would be discussion in the class. This is what ha typically happens. That's good. That's good. And building upon that, what are the evaluation patterns of all your subjects? Like, is there an NSEM of 70 marks and then 30 marks of internal SEM or is there something else? Yeah, so there would be uh, two minor exams and one major exam. Mm -hmm. So because we typically follow a semester system, mm -hmm. uh, each semester is around uh, four to five months long mm -hmm. when it comes to teaching. So four mm -hmm. months of teaching and say last one month of all the exams and then you get one month of break after each semester. Mm -hmm. That is the good part of doing an MBA from IIT, IITs, any IITs. Yeah, yeah. So we get good break as well. So when it comes to uh, evaluation, it is the minor exams, major exams, and a lot of uh, importance is given to group assignments, group projects, group yeah. assignments. So almost every subject you will have to have a final project at the end of the semester. And before that, there will be a lot more group assignments. So you would form a group at the beginning of a semester for each subject. So for each subject, you will have one group of say four to five people. Mm -hmm. And for the rest of the semester, you four will be working together on that subject. Mm -hmm. So be it any assignment, weekly assignment, or be it the end semester project, you will be working. So, uh, so projects and exams have good importance in there. So one second, the groups are divided among the students by the administration team, or you guys no, get to we get to we get to form one. I mean, few teachers choose to divide it, but uh, most of them give us the freedom of choosing our. Uh, groups. Nice. About the weightage of marks, you told two mid-sims and one end sim So yes. what is the weightage like 30, 30, 40 or 20, 20, 60? I, uh, it would come to around 20, 20, 40 and the rest 20 for uh, group assignments. Achha, achha, 20, 20, 20. Achha, achha. So 40 marks of end sim And even in the end yeah, it's like paper There pen. is no, I mean, it, it is again up to the, the faculty who is taking that course. So they have the freedom. They can, they can even put some mark for at attendance. Or some would say it's not needed. Some would only go by exam. Some would give importance to all of this. So there is no fixed pattern there. 
but the exam pattern is two uh, two uh, minors and one major mm-hmm. the way it is divided that depends upon the faculty and the one major exam is pen paper which can be only to a maximum of 40 marks yeah it is it can be pen paper it can be a open book test as well open wow. book or open laptop or it could be that kind of an exam as well. wow 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 and apart from that when we move ahead talking of your experiences so you mentioned that if you take finance you will be subjected to all the numerical aspects of the course but if you take marketing you will be subjected to case studies so is there an optional provision as well like you get to choose from certain specializations yeah so when you're talking about subjects what happens is the first year has fixed subjects for everyone mm. so you follow the core they are called pc program core subjects mm. that would involve subjects from uh, all the domains like economics HR, statistics finance marketing economics all of them in the second year you get to choose the subjects you want to study now if you want to major in marketing you have to do around 18 credits in marketing mm-hmm. so that is when in the electives you would choose more of marketing subjects and uh, then you also have subjects from operations finance as well as even uh, even it and analytics as well Mm-hmm. you get to major in any four of them uh, so you can't get to major in two of them is it you can only major in one of the four we can major in one and we can minor in one acha that is uh, the thing 18 credit is for majors and uh, 12 credits is for minor acha 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 about the clubs and committees though if yeah. you are a part of any of them like dms has a lot of clubs and committees yeah, 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 yeah. yes i was part of uh, media and pr committee wow again so, <laughs> yes <laughs> So, That's like cool. any other B school, we have committees for culturals, for placement, placement committee, and media PR. Then we have uh, alumni relations committee, mm-hmm. and we have one called Sheshak, which is which is for startups. Acha for startups. Entrepreneurship. It's an Achha. entrepreneurial club. Uh, sorry, committee. And uh, apart from that, there is a sports committee as well. Acha. And then there is also one international relations committee, which will handle our uh, PR with the rest of the countries, MOUs, yes. collaborations. With the, with the rest of the with the other universities in the country, yeah. so in other countries like that, which also takes care of our the global field study. International exchange program. Yeah, we do not have an international exchange program as such, like other where it's not like a semester ex- exchange. Instead, we have something called global field study, so which is called GFS, wherein uh, students get to go to some other country, like somewhere in Europe or any other country. So go and do a one credit course over there in Achha. any university in there so which is which would last for around 2 weeks 1 to 2 weeks mm-hmm. so it is more of like a field study not like an excursion and whole batch goes for it whole batch goes for it and the expenditure is taken care by the institution or the students get to pay it uh, up to 1 lakh is borne by the department anything Achha. exceeding that will be taken care by the student i mean traveling etc hosting will be much more than 1 lakh right if you are going to that europe that is for the country that you choose right so if you are yeah. if you are going to somewhere in europe i guess it would exceed 1 1.5 when you yeah. have to put around 0.5 to 1 lakh yeah. by uh, your side but department is anyway taking care of that 1 lakh up to 1 lakh yeah then that will be good and about the fees there is no fees for the global field week right there's no fees for that one or two weeks the academic institution where you guys go to they don't charge any fees up front right they would charge some uh, it depends on the university that you select if they do not have such thing so but again uh, i would say if we choose some country in asia let's say something nearby it it would be covered in this one lakh in the one lakh that is it would be handled by department the travel the course fees course fees is there but that would be a, it, that wouldn't be a major part major it would be traveling and host hostel if if the university is giving hostel facility there then probably they would be charging for makes that sense. as well makes sense and about the sashakt startup uh, entrepreneurial committee so do they guys help you with venture capitalist funds and all that incubation funding or are they just a committee to discuss ideas no 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 they help us with the funding if you have any idea we can go ahead and uh, we can see we can get their help for any kind of funding if uh, it comes in their network and also there is this incubation center so they have a close connect with the incubation iits incubation center so i mean if your startup qualifies for that you can probably avail that facility as well so relatively to the rest of the iims do you think you are at a better place when it comes to pursuing an mba from iit or any iit for that matter when it comes to pursuing any startup journey yeah see uh, i mean iits generally have a much better incubation centers than iims iims would have 
startups i would say any b school would have startups uh, something of uh, something non technical but when it comes to iits because the major cro- crowd there is from btech or mtech they would have tech based startups there mm-hmm. so you can you can even get to be part of that as well during your two years mba you can get to do live projects in these startups or you can also start your own in this incubation centers but again there is more emphasis on tech based startups there oh this is one very 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 important opportunity when it comes to pursuing your mba from iit you get to interact with all the btech guys exactly and get to yeah. network and leverage that opportunity. you get to be part of that younger crowd as well the btech crowd apart from the youth as well you get to be at the technical side of business you are exactly. already getting to learn the managerial aspect you getting to be yeah. the tech so did you have any opportunity to network with all of your juniors and you know get a few things going work on some project or something like that uh yes so uh, when i was taking part in few case competitions i need, i needed this uh, technical guidance so mm-hmm. i was reaching out to those btech second years or third years who could mm-hmm. help me with that so again it's open there we are in the same hostels there so you can yeah. walk into any hostel you can contact you can talk <laughs> to any walk into any hostel <laughs> Yeah, I mean. Kabir Singh vibes. <laughs> That's cool. But you will be Arjun Reddy. Sorry, Aditya Varma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so okay. I would do it Arjun Reddy rather than that. Yes. <laughs> me too. Me too. So uh, apart from that, you talked of you know all these opportunities that you get to network among the this thing. Acha, IIT Delhi also has a fest, right? This annual fest. What is it called? There is some specific word. I forgot that. This, Now that you mentioned, I that is. Uh, something difficult in to bombay it's more indigo what is it in this thing uh, i am not sure i have to look into this because see you guys are not great i all i also keep forgetting it all the time so it's okay it's okay so you guys didn't get to work on that like you guys uh, i mean that for me it happened to be the time when i went for gfs so Achha. it was around the same time so i couldn't be here i was there in gfs at that time Achha. so even that must be as i said like we missed one year of it right so we yeah, had, yeah. We had one, one year, year. that to seven eight months yeah so you were mentioning about the fact that the lectures are very much you know case driven if you're talking of non technical subjects mm-hmm. so on a typical day what does your schedule look like so i would i would sum it up on a weekly basis so mm-hmm. when it comes to uh, any subject so any three credit course you would have around 3 hours of class in a week in and a week. you would have yeah so in a semester you would have six such subjects yeah. six three credit subjects so yeah. it comes to around 18 to 20 hours of classes in a week and okay. now there is no regular pattern because it depends on the subjects you choose mm-hmm. some days you would have around six hours of class some days you would have just one and a half hours of class oh so that depends yeah so on an But average it is uh, mba from iit delhi is not as rigorous or as mm-hmm. uh, hectic compared other to other schools are told yeah, yeah. other other iims or other b schools are told that is one major plus point i would say wow, because wow, wow, you get wow. to work on yourself second you get to be part of you get to take part in a lot more case competitions which is very important for mba because there you would be working on real world business problems not Makes sitting sense. in a classroom and apart from that yes uh, you can also take up few live projects internships during the semester mm-hmm. so we have time for all of this mm-hmm. On an average, though, your classes last for four hours every day. That will be a good uh, statement to oh, make. Oh yeah, three, three, eighteen hours, hours of requirement, hours. right? Right. Yeah. And apart from that, so where does your day go to? Like, if I talk of internships, if I talk of case competitions, where are you engaged in for the rest of your day? Rest of the day would be, I would say, uh, around thirty percent of it would be uh, involved in, let's say, any group projects of that particular oh, subject. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That is one thing. Second, people take up live projects almost. almost everyone would be involved in any of any or the other live projects which would be arranged by the department itself and apart from that case competitions there are plenty of case competitions that can be that you can take part in right so wow. that is i think that would be that itself would take a lot of time there think so i guess we have summed up the student life experience very well now we come towards the more controversial perhaps the most important aspect of this episode which is the placements yeah. so iit delhi has the student body thing in place as well where you know you get to be a part of student body or not yes yes so uh, there is this placement committee which is run by students so do you get to pay <laughs> fees exceeding your 6 lakhs per year or is that included before and sorry you get to pay a certain amount a certain amount of fees above the 6 lakhs per year of fees to get to be a part of placements or is that no, 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 no. there is no there is no fees for that you it is a selection process purely based on 
few tasks that are given and your interest yeah. to get into the placement committee like any other committee i told you media peer and there is a cultural committee so placement committee is one of them so yeah. we'll handle all of placements and uh, corporate relations acha acha so apart from that so you know there are these disciplinary codes of conduct which are very much a practice across all the b schools that if you're not shaving your beard not wearing the blazer properly you'll not be allowed to sit with the subsequent companies is that a case with iit delhi too yes that is also there so these kind of strict uh, i mean to have a decorum in the whole batch this <laughs> has to be i mean that has to be there <laughs> Imagine you getting to be in your corporate and not shaving your beard, but your B school forcing you to yeah, do that. Yeah, that that is that is the uh, I would say that is the funniest thing or that's the irony over there. And I mean, most of the uh, corporate leaders who come to our campus to take some webinar, they would be surprised seeing all students <laughs> dressed up in suit, and they themselves would be coming out in a very chilled out manner. Sure and and they would be they would be feeling kind of uh, inferior looking at the students. They are like. Uh, yeah. I didn't. I didn't dress up this way, like like you guys. You guys are so dressed up, yeah. And they uh, and I don't know if I I don't know. I think these leaders think students are doing this by choice, but we know the reality exactly. being in this side of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, did you face any such circumstance where you know because you didn't shave your beard because you have a full fledged, properly grown beard? So, were, were yeah, you yeah. in a similar situation? Yeah, yeah. yeah. During yeah. these events, I used to kind of trim it up. This was very. Uh, it was kind of strict over there. and uh, there would be these violations that will be counted so you exceed yeah. a particular be it late instances or be it having uh, not having a proper haircut or beard not wearing your uh, tie or not wearing formal shoes will be counted yeah. as a few uh, violation and yeah. once you exceed certain number of violations some action will be taken by the department yes yeah 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 some action which I mean, include i've got enough of them i've got enough of those violations but i ended up safe so It some is. action which has a good influence on your placements as well right yeah you uh, it it could be in terms of not letting you be part of your next interview or not letting you take part in next uh, next let's say some event placement event yes oh 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 so building upon that as well when we talk of iitd's placement statistics what are the kind of companies that most of the students get to be a part of yeah so generally uh, people have this notion right people have this i mean anybody who is who thinks of iit delhi from outside have this notion that it's an engineers mm. school engineers and you get only technical roles like operations but operations yeah. yeah so that is what is thought by people that is what uh, i think that is what is perceived from outside but once you get in there we get to know that we have almost uh, good placements in when it comes to sales and marketing wow. and operations these are the two domains two uh, domains where most of the students get placed in apart from that it analytics is another one and consulting mm -hmm. so these are the kind of roles that students these are the kind of domain students will be getting in so what is the average uh, batch size average batch size would be somewhere around 120 120 so do 120 you are claiming that 20% of the batch is getting placed in consulting close to 60% is engaged in sales marketing and your this thing operations yeah yes that is how it is and also it analytics, analytics. Right. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and about the finance and uh, hr roles are quite less and this is this is the information scenario placement scenario of my batch which was 2021 20, 2023 batch but now that i see i see my juniors getting placed in uh, i mean quite not a, not legacy companies that were coming in uh, ah, iit yeah. delhi before the so, is not that good right no but i also see that companies like hul and mondless have come this year for oh. summer interview yeah and oh. that too for core finance roles as well Oh, so HQL is coming for a finance role. Yeah, oh. exactly. So the the whole scenario is the kind of dynamics in DMS IT Delhi is changing now. Oh. oh so oh. what I told you, the uh, majority of batch going into sales and marketing or operations was the scenario of my batch. But now I think things are things have changed. Things are bound to change. Things are bound yes. to change. So yeah, about the summer internships as well. So you mentioned HQL coming for finance and Mondelez as well coming for finance. During yes. your time, what were the kind of companies that were turning up? so during my time uh, so initially it would be this uh, legacy proper legacy ones like bain bain and mckenzie coming up for uh, inter summer internship then when it comes to marketing it would be like, say T tcp tata consumer products that is one and uh, then uh, so because this is like kind of like 3 years past so i'm kind of trying <laughs> to recall what has happened so anyway but placement summer internship during my batch was really good so 
it just lasted one month summer internship placements i'm talking about mm-hmm. the whole placement process mm-hmm. so again i mean i think it's the same same kind of proportion that follows in summer internships as well the uh, emphasis on operations and sales and marketing followed by consulting roles unlike iims there's no process of having day zero day one day two right it is spread no, across no, a, a proper time. season so that's which which could last around one to two months so for a maximum of two months not more than that even in this month this was summer inter- summer internship i'm talking about but when it comes to the final placement it could last somewhere around three to four months yeah three to four months yeah makes sense but again you would see ma- major chunk of people getting placed in the first one month and then followed by few companies coming that on are, a, uh, yeah yeah yes. yeah so about the placements as well what do you think are the most important factors that a company chooses to look into when a person is pursuing his mba from dms iitd what does that make it to break it factor for a placement i think uh, one is having a good cv where you put all your achievements and the kind you i mean it should be your cv should be drafted for the domain that you want to get in mm-hmm. so this is what i mean this is advised by almost everyone now you need to have a domain specific one cv that is one thing and followed by the way you perform in interview that is all it takes nobody i mean uh, of course the number of years of experience matters because if you have way too many number of years say about 6 years then i have seen that kind of bias in placement processes by the companies not shortlisting these candidates i mean when you have too much amount of work ex so when they see when they find that you have about 6 years and you are not moldable so probably i mean that is the reason why acha acha so the shortlisting process is kind of skewed towards those people who have around precious experience that is the that is the ideal number of experience ideal amount of experience so even freshers face this even lot of freshers also kind of struggle getting shortlisted for few companies but few companies go with freshers as well about the academics is there a lot of emphasis on academics as well that is that is i mean uh, academics during mba there is no much emphasis but there is also i mean a basic emphasis on your undergrad cgpa so you okay. should there would be a very base level you should have a cgpa above 6.5 or 7 so okay. it's not like you have 9 and you get an you get uh, advantage over others it's just that you clear this barrier okay. and then you are you are all even yes you mentioned a very interesting factor that if a certain individual has a work experience of more than 6 years he can't be moldable that really blew me apart like you know companies do consider this fact that he gets to be a part of certain culture and then he's put through a certain system he can't come out of it that is what they think yeah so i mean uh, so this is what companies perceive so few of them have this uh, perception that if you are above 6 years it is quite tough for you to gel into their culture oh Or, so that is I mean it depends from company to company but this is the major trend that i uh, that i i kind of analyzed being yeah, a senior I'm, product I'm, analyst yes <laughs> wow 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 I mean, i'm talking about i the observation i had during my mba during your placements yeah i yeah. got that i got yes apart from that when we talk of all the offers that have been made at the campus what is the average cash to ctc ratio like you know there's this one thing that zomato did dipender gold did he offered a 1 crore package out of which cash component was 20 lakhs <laughs> <laughs> yeah. is there a similar situation in dms as well so the average that is talked about in the placement reports right which falls somewhere around 22 lpa this would include uh joining bonus or say any of uh, variable yeah. bonuses as well yes so i mean the base pay would be say 80% of what is the 0.8 uh, is the average across all yeah, the yeah, that is i think that's across most b schools even you see any b school posting a uh highest package of 60 they lakhs they have very less like, yeah, yeah they would definitely have this there would be a rsu component or exactly. there would be there would be some kind of bonus or mm-hmm. incentives performance based incentives as well makes so sense that is here yeah. so if a student who seeks to get into a specific domain mm-hmm. maybe just maybe iitd is not the place for him specific domain means can you uh, for example like if somebody wants to get into finance kori code is the place if somebody wants to get into marketing mica is the place so yeah, yeah, if somebody yeah. wants to if somebody wants to get into hr tis is the place so if yeah. somebody is targeting a specific domain maybe itd is not the best place that's what you're trying to say uh i would say maybe it's not the best place when you're targeting for hr roles because we don't see that kind of placements happening but apart from that as i said the other domains like marketing and operations are the top ones then apart from that i mean as i said the scenario is kind of changing in these years where lot of lot more core finance roles are coming up so that is also good but i would say see the mba that we have in uh, in dms is 
it's a general mba yeah right yeah. and then it's your choice to either major or minor in one mm. so you are not doing a mba in marketing or mba in finance you are yeah. doing mba in general management with majoring in marketing or finance based on your choice acha 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 makes sense makes sense and apart from that other general management roles in the campus as well we yeah, don't touch few, uh, management trainee roles also come up there so uh, i mean i think i think that is something i missed out yeah so that yeah, is also okay. there what about the if we can be a little more precise about it what is the lowest package of your year lowest package of my year i'm not sure probably i'll be getting <laughs> a lot of it for that <laughs> after this goes live but i would say i mean it's it is it should be somewhere around 16 16 16 yeah. is still a very very good number given how yeah. the market has shaped up after that so maybe we have covered enough depth of placements or are we missing out on something with regard to placements anything else that... i think we are done we are done <laughs> with this i think we are done enough to enough for me to get a few points after this <laughs> maybe from my faculty sir <laughs> a lot of claims about 6 years work ex and you know uh, yeah, i did yeah, not being the best place for a specialized thing but yeah you answered very well you really took the rational out of that situation so apart from that now building up on your mba experience so mm-hmm. when you talk about exposure apart from case competitions apart from committees is there anything else that iit delhi is helping you with mm-hmm. so uh, can you be more precise what kind of exposure like see you- for example uh, sp jimar has a specific mm-hmm. program where you get to be a part of the board of the company for a specific day like you know you get to interact with executive positions even isb hyderabad they have okay. this uh, program through which you can you know uh, have this rural immersion thing like you can mm-hmm. go to a rural area understand how marketing is permeating through that segment okay. so is there anything else like these programs and you know they also have mandatory live projects as well you get to no, no, no. Uh, we do not have any mandatory live projects in our uh, in our curriculum but i i see a lot of students taking up live projects because that is where you actually get involved in the real business right you mm-hmm. get to be part of some so as you say as you said being part of board these kind of things we do not have but we have good amount of live projects that come up i mean live projects even because of uh, being part of iit delhi it's if you get to do live projects in the in the campus mm-hmm. in few incub- in, in the incubation centers as well wow 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 that is a, that is an added advantage i have seen few uh, few of my batchmates doing live projects i mean uh, as you would be knowing the second year of mba is quite chilled out after year no, yeah yeah, yeah after yeah. getting your yeah so that is when i have seen few of my friends doing it doing this uh, live projects in live incubation project. makes sense makes sense makes sense so apart from that so when we talk of the entire mba exp- experience and compare it with the rest of the iims that are very much pertinent in the market since one can ever imagine so mm-hmm. if you had to enumerate the kind of differences in both of the courses that are offered Do you think IITs are more inclined towards offering you a general MBA versus the rest of the IIMs? Yes. Yeah, that is that is one trend that you can say uh, is persistent there. But uh, as I said, even though you are doing a general management MBA in general management, you get to major in the field of your choice. So mm-hmm. I mean, you are doing MBA in general management, but then the kind of courses that you would pick up if you are majoring in marketing, sec- whole of your second year would be the courses related to marketing, be it market research or product management or sales and advertisement so so again i i don't think that kind of is a point of factor constraining yeah, factor yeah exactly so with that vision we have come towards the end of the episode that was one power packed episode with the most accurate of insights that you can gather on the college so if you had to summarize your entire experience and convince a fresh aspirant that iit delhi is the best place to pursue your mba from what would your answer be So uh, before that, I would like to say, if you are doing MBA from IIT Delhi, I, I was coming ready, to that. I was coming. I was coming. Any IITs, be ready to tell the rest of your your relatives or your neighbors when you say you are doing IIT from uh, from uh, you, when you say you are doing MBA from IIT. The next question from their side would be, IITs me MBA bhi hota hai kya? That is the yeah, question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you should be ready to answer yes, IITs have MBA. So that is that is the general perception there. But apart from that, when you say IIT Delhi is the the reason why iit delhi is the best place to do mba one definitely it's value for money the amount you are paying so uh, the the fees that you pay right so as i was saying it it is covered 1 lakh is covered by the department for gfs so it's more like you're getting back the 1 lakh that you spent on your mba right away during during the course of your mba apart from that you also get uh, in the first year of mba you also get a laptop from the department wow 
which is up to 50000 so you're outright you're getting 1.5 lakh back during the course of your mba before you finish your mba itself mm. so value for money is definitely there second the brand image so mm. brand of iit will be will be carrying along with you mm. for the rest of your life that is one thing and second thing is academics is not as rigorous as it is told to be in other other mba colleges mm. so you get to have a life as well you get to understand yourself you get to be part of real world business problems more than being in a in a curriculum there so that is also i mean as i was telling it's just 18 to 20 hours of academic classes per week in, yeah per week so that is that is pretty well spread out so you get to have you get to do lot more things there so value for money brand image relaxed environment and a plural environment as well where you get to interact with btech guys exactly yes that was pretty much it so to all the viewers who are watching this episode dishan also runs his own youtube channel called b schooler where he tries disseminating information on b schools and gives tap, tips on cat yes so uh, so this is a new thing that i have started now this channel so i am trying to give that i mean more like what you are doing the kind of work that you are doing wherein you are giving this transparency when it comes to yeah. mba ecosystem right doing your mba series you are I mean, I think I think that's a really good thing that you're doing. You're giving the transparent, the kind of questions, placement related <laughs> questions that you're asking, <laughs> which which gives the uh, exact clarity that a student needs. So that is the kind of uh, that is a uh, gap that I'm trying to bridge as well when it comes to preparation. So there are a lot of misconceptions when it comes to CAT preparation or the lack of information there. So I I mean, from my side, having written CAT for four years now, so whatever I can help any aspirant with, that is what I'm trying to do with the channel there. So guys, do subscribe to B Schooler. This is me advertising for them, advertising for an advertising. I imagine. <laughs> yes. And so, uh, if I had to ask you for one final advice to all mm-hmm. the aspirants out there who are not only going to embark on their MBA journey, but who are going to finalize on their specific job, what would it look like? One thing is uh, one very important advice that I would give is during your summer internship, I see a lot of people being obsessed over getting the PPO from the company, right? but i think summer internship is where you need to try you need to figure out if this is what you want to do for the rest of your life if this is where you want to transit after your mba so you have to it's more like figure out things there just play around just observe the kind of work that the people in that company are doing so don't be so obsessed over getting that ppo you can still be part of the final placements and get a good job so mm-hmm. so in mba it's more like exploring yourself exploring the kind of work the field of work that you should be doing in the rest, for the rest of your life and sort of being obsessed with the specific role try to explore as much as possible yeah so we go with this notion right so this is what i want i want to be a brand manager after this so don't go with that fixed mindset go with an open mindset where and do more of live projects do more of internships your mm-hmm. summer internship and explore if this is apt for you expose yourself to a myriad of opportunities that's way that's the only way you can figure it all out exactly yes trying to say so with that dishan we come towards the end that was really nice to get to talk to you i really had a great time and the energy as well the energy aspect wow it was more yeah. than brilliant yeah thank you so much kripal i mean as i told the, the mba series that you are doing is outstanding it's kudos to you for that kudos to giving this uh, transparency in this whole thing <laughs> so anybody who is watching will be getting the true aspects about that particular college not okay. the kind of things they see on their website on the college website or placements yes yeah thank you thank you again